Hello, and welcome to another 8-minute demo. Today we're going to be talking about PowerShell execution options between Opalis and VMM. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a tech evangelist, solutions architecture for the System Center suite of products. So today we're going to be talking about PowerShell remoting uh, with VMM and uh, basically covering off on what happens if you wanted to execute a PowerShell script or command against a, a VMM host or machine and um, you want to use Opalis, maybe you want to use uh, just a PowerShell script or you want to use Opalis.NET uh, scripting object. So uh, what I have here is a bunch of different scenarios I'm going to run through and uh, I will end on the actual execution of the PowerShell script or command within the, the .NET scripting object. So first I want to show you what you may run up against if you just try to do it out of the box. So if we take a look at, uh, we got two different PowerShell um, consoles here. One's the x86 and one's the uh, x64. Now we know for a fact that if we have the x64 um, PowerShell console here, and we're going to take some commands here, and we'll do them one at a time just so it's easier. I don't go so fast. So we're going to add the PS snap in for Virtual Machine Manager, and then we're going to just execute the git vmm server command, nothing special there, just get the fqdn of the vmm server. We can see it returns a value and I'll just uh, remove that snap in just so I don't forget. Alright, so we can see that works, but if we go to the x86 um, console and we try the same thing, we're going to hit a problem right off the bat. And there you see it. So the reason I'm showing you this is because you're going to hit the same exact thing if you try to use the .NET scripting object um, from within Opala. So let's create a new workflow, put a run.NET script object in there, choose PowerShell, and then let's just grab uh, this guy, which would normally work um, for other things, adding PS snap-ins for uh, SCOM, maybe it's on the machine or something like that. But let's go ahead and run this and um, actually we'll assign this to a variable. Not that it's going to matter because it's not going to work, but I do want to show you run through the... Alright, hit finish. We'll just run it through the testing console here real quick and we'll see what kind of error you get. Open this guy up, and you can see the Git VMM server is not recognized. Now, that may not make sense off the bat because that error message is not alluding to the fact that the PS snap in never went in. In fact, it it's not bringing back the error that we got here. It's trying to just load the next thing as it's moving on. So when we take a look at here, while we did put add the PS snap in here, it's erring out on that but then trying to do this. Now there are, is a valid workaround for this and that's what this video is all about. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into that right now. So I'm going to go to a different um, .NET scripting object. I just renamed it to execute VMM command. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to take uh, show you what the workaround would be for this exact issue. So we need to create a PS session and we need to uh, essentially execute an invoke command with that session and a script block to accomplish the same thing. It, it's not as pretty, but it allows you to do what you need to do and get the information you need to get out of uh, VMM using the .NET scripting object. Now alternatively, all you have to do is wait for the uh, VMM integration pack, which drops later this month. but um, for now, and if you wanted to do any other interrogation of VMM, you're probably going to have to do it this way. So we're going to uh, set up some uh, credentials information here, then create a session, and then there's that same variable that I created. And this time, though, we're doing the invoke command dash session, which is created up here, dash script block. Then we're creating a script block with the information that we want. So we're going to add the PS app in. We're going to get the VMM server uh, dash computer name and then select the object expand property FQDN just like we did before. And then we'll close out the session and um, we'll see how that works there. 
So go ahead and hit finish. We'll run this through the testing console real quick. And we should see the FQDN of my VMM server once this completes. And there you go. Test data. Uh, the results, as I've named it, test data, is uh, the FQDN. And we can see that as well. From here, it would be the same exact results there. Now, uh, those of you who are very keen uh, and have seen that I'm using Windows uh, 2008, I'm using a uh, beta version of the Opal 6.3. So I did want to show you that it doesn't matter if you're using it on 2008 or 2003. So I'm going to switch quickly over to 2003, which you can see that I'm on 2003 now. There we go. And we have the same scenario here. So uh, if we're just running a PowerShell command here, like we did before, you're, you can expect that when we run this through the testing console, we're going to see that same error where it doesn't recognize the git vmm command, as you can see. Yet, if we do the same command that we just did with the session, and the invoke command just like that and we run this in 2003 on uh, Opal 622 this is actually Opal 622 we can still interrogate VMM and get the information out as desired so you can see it doesn't matter what version of the OS you're working on obviously you do need some uh, PowerShell and some PowerShell remoting to perform these activities but uh, everything you need to do, you should be able to do by encapsulating those commands in a session in a script block. Now, if you needed to execute the commands via command line, we have uh, options for that as well. And I'll go through those in a moment. All right, now we're going to take a look at uh, using the run program object to execute a PowerShell script on a remote machine. It happens to be the VMM machine as well. So the setup for this is very easy. For a run program, we just uh, drag one out and add one. You identify which computer you want to run the PowerShell script on. And then in the command line, we're going to do cmd.exe space forward slash c space pipe space and then whatever uh, the path to the script that you're going to execute. You can see here in the advanced, um, I have this set to uh, wait for completion. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then essentially that's that's it. Now, obviously we need a script on the other side, so I'm going to go over to the VMM machine, and you can see in the c colon temp directory I have a test.ps1, and I will um, open that with Notepad. You can say in here I have the script that I had before, except this time I'm going to output the value from the test variable into an output.txt in the same folder just so we can see it happen uh, since we're running it as a command. So, all right, now you can see that. I will go back to Opalis and kick this off. Should take a couple seconds. Hit refresh, and it is done. If we take a look at the results, pro program output, we'll be able to see everything that happens. So we'll just open this up in WordPad. And you can see that it did execute. And obviously, the easier test is to see that the output.txt was created with the output that we desired. All right, and that's it. It's that simple. So you can make complex PowerShell scripts uh, place them on the target box uh, like the VMM machine and execute them remotely via the run program object within Opalis. And once again, this was from the 622 instance of Opalis, but it would work with the version um, 6.3 stuff that's coming out that will run on 2008. So giving you a couple examples of executing a PowerShell against VMM, um, but these things are, could be used against other targets 
and other types of products as well depending on your PowerShell script but the concept I wanted to get down is that you can use the .NET scripting object with PowerShell as well as the run program object with PowerShell to execute the scripts or um, code that you might have against those target products. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you get a chance to use it. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.